Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. God bless you, brother. It's an honor. Wow. Oh, a real blessing. You know, tonight, tonight feels like the old days, like it was live TV. We used to do this, uh, do this live from every studio. It was, it was a fascinating experience. Wow. Um, but let me, let me first of all say thank you for being a part of this show tonight. Oh, no, I wouldn't miss it. You gave me my break, so I'm, oh, I'm appreciative. Please, thank no. you. God opened the door for you, yeah, buddy. Well, he used you as the doorman. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. Um, you know, I've, I've seen you, of course, preaching on the uh, Praise the Lord uh, 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 Praise-a-thon. Yes. And, uh, and you just blessed us so much. Yeah. But I saw the other night where you were on a broadcast, I think it was on cable television. Yes. Where it was intervention, where you were doing deliverance from addictions. Yes. Talk a little bit about that broadcast and how that ministry started for you. Yeah, I'm uh, now doing an intervention for uh, R&B artists, uh, people who have done well in uh, so secular society but have lost their place. Mm -hmm. uh, what you know, as Dave is way better than I, is so many people who are, we applaud as celebrities uh, people who started off in the church, mm -hmm. uh, and the church really didn't affirm them, and so they looked for the applause out in the world. Uh, and the applause of the world drowned them so far uh, that only the church now can rescue them. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that the church has got to be careful of is that we are the only, the Salvation Army is the only people who leave their wounded soldiers. Mm -hmm. uh, that if you mess up in the church, we don't want to touch you, we don't want to bother you, uh, because we think that we're too good. And the Bible says it's your righteousness that's like filthy rags. Mm -hmm. uh, but th those are our young people that came up out of the youth choir, out of the junior usher board that really need us. And one of the untapped areas of ministry is really addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, and that we are presently living in the United States of addiction uh, ah. because uh, one out of five people are addicted to tobacco. Mm -hmm. One out of eight are binge eaters. Mm -hmm. One out of 12 are uh, addicted to shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, one out of 15 are, in fact, on a controlled substance. And so if the church doesn't speak to it, uh, we're going to lose a whole generation of people who have become addicted. And we have lost sight of the fact because when we do altar calls, we talk about addiction, the uh, Newports and uh, Johnny Walker Red, but there are people who are addicted to Twitter and addicted to Facebook. You and, better say uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, uh, and addicted to people who are toxic. Yeah. Uh, it's important that we address those issues. Yes. I mean, you know, I find that very I, that powerful that you would, you know, just speak to those issues yes. that touch people's lives. Uh, people get touchy about that. They don't feel like they're, they're uh, hooked on anything. Yes. But you've touched on some things that, that consumes people's time and mind, and, and it... The smallest thing can become an addiction. The, the, there's a man in Mark chapter 5, Jesus uh, confronts him, and the, and the text says that he went up into the high place and into the valley. And what the American Psychological Association would call it uh, self-harm. Mm -hmm. because nobody was doing it to him. He inflicted himself mm -hmm. with shards of glass. Mm -hmm. So many people are victimized by their own bad decisions mm -hmm. and by their own poor choices. If you do an MRI on people who are dealing with addictions, you'll find that they have low prefrontal cortex. Mm -hmm. And low prefrontal cortex means they do not have the ability to pause. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to slow down. It's interesting, David, who was the man after God's own heart, contributed uh, so many songs just like you have to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. In the midst of a high worship, David would write, Selah which means pause. I need you, before you praise me, think about what you're doing. Uh -huh. Before you give me glory, consider why it is that you're giving me the glory. And most people who are in addictions do not know how to say la. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to pause and say, how is this going to affect my children? 
Uh, how is this going to affect my budget? How is this going to affect my health? How is this going to affect my destiny? How does it affect my call and my future? But we just are driven by our own, adri- uh, by our own drive and our own pleasure. So when we look at it, because, uh, Clifton, we have gone to such a society of being victims that we never pause to consider what we've done to ourselves. It's interesting to note that the enemy, the devil, never forced anybody to drink alcohol. He never forced anybody to smoke weed, and he never forced anybody to sleep with anybody. Uh, The the devil's aspiration is holiness Mm. uh, because he wants a throne that will rival God. Mm. And so what he'll do is he'll try to make us build little altars so that we'll never get to the place where he was, Mm. which was right at the throne. Lucifer was a worshiper. And because he can't stand anybody to worship who's been forgiven, Uh, He'll try to contaminate our worship by making us inebriated by false substance. Mm. But when you have pure praise, it'll give you a high that heroin can't give you, Uh that cocaine can't give you, that alcohol can't give you, and it'll take you to a place where you've never been before. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes, you're right. So you're right. Pure praise. I like that phrase. You don't mind if I borrow it from time to time. Absolutely. Have at it. Pure praise. That's that's like oxygen. Yes. Straight out the can. Yeah, Hummer ab- right out the tank. That's like, oh, all yeah. your cells and everything starts to expand. Your, at- your mind works better. Your feet work. Your limbs work better. Your muscles yeah, work. Everything works better That's when right. you get a pure praise up yes. in you. Mm. And, and praise, really, praise is, is the original crack. Come Praise on. is the original crack because when he told him to keep walking around the wall, he said, don't say anything. Ha! But he said, at the designated moment, blow your trumpet and you'll see cracks in the wall. Ha! There ought to be something about when you praise God, you ought to see crack pieces. <laughs> pieces that were trying to block you from your destiny ought to begin to fall into place. And That's a real right. praiser always sees something change. Mm-hmm. We don't praise because of the syncopation of the organ or the praise team or because our favorite preachers on TBN. We praise God because I had a flashback. Uh-huh. And I think about where I used to be and what I, how I used to live. And that ought to bring me to a place to crack things apart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going yes. when this I'm you know, I start to say when this show gets off the air, I'm gonna give him some praise. Yes. I'm not waiting. Yeah. Hallelujah! <laughs> Glory! I'm gonna give him a praise right now! Right now I'm gonna praise you! Right. I'm gonna praise you in this Hallelujah. room! I'm gonna praise you in the middle of my circumstances! Hallelujah! I'm gonna praise you in my trouble! Hallelujah. I'm gonna praise you in my trial! I'm gonna praise you like a praise. that, Jamal. Thank yes. you, Pastor. Absolutely. Thank you. You don't know, man. You just you just did something wonderful for me. Yes. What a blessing. Yes. What a blessing. Woo, I guess it worked for them, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I sang about prayer because I, I, I have I prayed about a particular situation. Yes. And it didn't go the way I prayed, and I had all these people praying, and and my wife was praying, but it went the other way. Yes. But there was a strange calmness over me. Yes. And and I understood it as being God saying, don't trip. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Don't trip. Yes. I heard you, Mm -hmm. and I'm on it. Yes. Because, and that's why I wanted to sing that song and and start the show off that way, because there are times when it may look like, you know, uh, your prayer hasn't been answered. But talk to me about the power of prayer. A a lot of Sunday school teachers and a lot of pastors really should be in court tomorrow for malpractice uh, because they have done a grave injustice to the body of Christ uh, because we've taught 
uh, people how to pray in one dimension. We've taught them how to talk, but we have not taught the body how to listen. Mm. So we get down on our knees before we get in the bed. Now lay me down to sleep. Lord, bless me with my bills. Uh, help me get to school. And then we jump in the bed. And God is saying, what kind of conversation is this? Mm -hmm. It's like me, Clifton, calling you. Hey, man, I was just saying how you were doing. Hope all is well and hanging up. Mm -hmm. I never pause to say how you feel about it, mm -hmm. uh, what your response is. Prayer is a conversation, and we've been taught it's a monologue. Yes. Uh, we, we just do what it is that we want to do. And the enemy wants to stop us from our prayer. I, I flew in uh, earlier today, and because I had some time, I went and saw uh, Denzel Washington's new movie, Unstoppable. Mm. Uh, and it, it talks about a train that's carrying nuclear uh, energy on it, mm. uh, and it has no brakes. Mm. Uh, and it says, if, in fact, it is not stopped, cities will be impacted. Mm. Hundreds of thousands of people will be exposed to the energy that's on it. Mm. And they did everything they could to stop the train. Denzel Washington made up in his mind, the only way that you can stop that which is unstoppable, Clifton, is to pull it backwards. Mm. And that's what the enemy wants to do with every prayer warrior. Mm. Because there's so much in us that is nuclear. There's so much in us that if we get exposed, the anointness in us, it'll change cities, it'll change nations, mm. it'll change communities. So what the enemy tries to do for people who really operate in the dimension of the apostolic, who really realm operate in the realm of the supernatural, because he cannot stop the unstoppable move of favor, mm -hmm. he'll try to pull us backwards. Mm -hmm. Any person who's going somewhere, the sign that you are going somewhere is when people remind you of your past. Mm -hmm. uh, because, it, it, because they can't do anything about where it is that you're going, they'll try to compromise your thought and compromise your mind frame by pulling you backwards. But because you have nuclear energy inside of you. Come on. If you ever able to expose your gift, your opportunity, your anointing, and your call, the Lord gave me an incredible word for the body of Christ tonight, and that word is, you are too anointed to be anonymous. Oh. There, there, there is no way, there is no way with all of the gift that's in you mm -hmm. that people are not going to know who you are. He said, I'm going to make your name great. Mm -hmm. But in order to make your name great, Winston Churchill said, bad news goes around the world before good news puts on shoes. Mm. So what God has to do is he'll let sometimes something negative get out about you so that when something good comes out, people will have word association. Oh, you mean Jamal Bryan whose marriage didn't work? Oh, you mean so-and-so who dropped out of college? Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean so-and-so who got two different baby daddies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the exact same one. Yeah. But now they got something moving in them uh -huh. that God will move them as an unstoppable force. That's right. He's going to make your negative stuff turn into something yeah. Positive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what God will do. Yes. So the power of prayer is realizing what it is that you're carrying. Clifton, you and I know some incredibly powerful people, and we can get, if we exchanged our Rolodex, yes. we could get all kinds of people from New York on the phone and L.A. on the phone. People and would want to buy it. Yeah, people would want to buy it, absolutely. But none of us, or, 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 I don't think, the random person cannot get President Obama on the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't even get President Bush's number uh, on the phone. But what an incredible access to know 24 hours a day I can get the King of Kings on the phone. <laughs> Uh, that, 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 that's an incredible kind of power, and the enemy doesn't want us to utilize that kind of power. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, oh, that's great. Yeah. Yes, he's available. He's available. I've got access. Absolutely. I'm a son and an heir. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can, hey, who are you talking about? Oh, you God? No, I'm his child. Absolutely. I'm his child, so I can reach my daddy. Yes. Praise the yes. Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, you, 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 you're developing at uh, Empowerment Temple a minister of mentorship, a yes. ministry of mentorship? Yes. Talk, us, talk to us about that. I, the missing link for this generation is this generation is having to, having to find success without a mentor. Uh, without having a guide or a manual. One of the things that I found, Clifton, is God never calls you to do what you've been trained to do. Mm. If you know how to do it, God wouldn't call you to do it. Mm. He will call you at such a place of vulnerability where you're saying, God, I have absolutely no idea, but he'll give you on-the-job training. Yeah. Uh, and so what, what God is raising up, we've got uh, so many people who want titles but don't have compassion. Uh, and so we're, we're not, uh, and, and, and we're in a dangerous place because this generation is not raising sons, they're raising 
armor bearers. Uh, see, I, I don't need somebody to just pour me water and carry my briefcase. There is no success without a successor. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if the two of us are on TBN year after year and we never raise anybody to take our place, mm -hmm. then the blood is on our hands. It is only, it is only, um, it is only lonely at the top. It is only lonely at the top if you take nobody with you. Mm -hmm. You got to make up in your mind that I want to see somebody get to the next level. God is not a God of individuals. He's our personal savior, but he's the God of generations. Yes. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm -hmm. And so it's incumbent upon us to make sure that whoever comes behind us does more than us. Uh, my grandfather did an incredible work in ministry, did an incredible work in ministry in Baltimore. Uh, of sainted memory, my grandfather, uh, uh, late Bishop Harrison James Bryan, whose name I carry, pastored 600 people uh, in the 1960s. Incredible ministry, landmark. Uh, my father, Bishop John Richard Bryan, who's the senior bishop of the AME Church, in his height, pastored 5,000 people. Wow. Uh, I pastor now, starting a church in 2000, pastor now 10,000 people. Wow. Uh, I, I, God did not, Clifton, he didn't call me he called my family. I, I, I now father all daughters. I don't have any biological sons, mm -hmm. but all of my daughters should be, be exceeding me. Mm -hmm. It is unbiblical for my grown daughters to live in my house. They should be taking care of me. Mm -hmm. But because we haven't raised our children to build, we've raised our children to receive. Yeah. And so we don't have a prodigal son. We have a prodigal generation. Yes. And the greatest sin against the prodigal son is he wanted his inheritance like the father was dead, mm. which means I'd rather my parents not be alive. And this generation has no respect for the generation that has gone before them because too many parents aren't parents. They want to be friends. Yeah. Uh, and so it's important for us to serve as mentors and as a light for the next generation that Amen. comes by. Amen. Amen. Wow, that's that's important, powerful thoughts. Yes. I, I'm going to uh, uh, go and tape this show just so I could take what you're talking about and <laughs> preach about it. All right. Yeah, all right. What a blessing, Jamal. Yes. Talk yes. to us a little bit about uh, technology in ministry. Yes. Um, how can it be a positive, uh, have a positive impact? How can it positively affect ministry, technology? Th this broadcast is a reflection of that. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, last week, I preached uh, in the Georgia Dome to some 25,000 people, young people, 18 to 45. Uh, and they were packed to the rafters, same place where the Atlanta Falcons play. Praise the Lord. Uh, but this medium called TBN, tonight I'll be in 10 million homes. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it's not an a, a issue of apples and oranges. It's an issue of an orange or an orange orchid. Uh, and so technology gets you into places. My church only hosts 2,500 people. I see 3,000 people. Uh, uh, I see uh, three different services on Sunday morning. Uh, but I see 6,000 people per service on the Internet mm. uh, because this is the first time the recession that's taking place in America, mm -hmm. and I need pastors to hear me, overseers to hear me, bishops to hear me who are frustrated. This is the first time in American history where there's been a crisis that didn't cause the church to grow. Every other time that America has gone through a crisis, we've had explosives, e explosive evangelical work. But this is a time where people aren't coming. And part of the reason is because the church sold a false bill of goods. We said favor was if you get a new house. Gr a favor is if you get a new car. Favor is your designer clothes. Now, here's the problem, Clifton. What happens when the saints get their house foreclosed? When, when the saints get their cars repossessed? Uh, when I'm wearing the same church clothes three Sundays out of a month? Mm -hmm. uh, do I still have favor? See, the favor of God has nothing to do with anything tangible. The favor of God says even when I'm broke, I'm still eating every day. Uh, the favor of God is that even when I don't have a support mechanism, my children are all right. So it's important that the minister, the average person, average young person, 18 to 45, spends 600 minutes a week on Facebook. Mm -hmm. There needs to be an evangelical outreach on Facebook, on Twitter, on MySpace, on everything on the Internet. Otherwise, uh, you have to understand the most visited websites on the planet are porn websites. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's got to be something. There's got to be praise websites uh, to say that when I'm feeling low, when I'm feeling down, let me just go with law 
all go on www praise and somebody just start shouting uh, so I can just give God the glory uh, all by myself and so technology has got to be the instrument that's used for ministry praise the Lord yeah. well I you know I could just talk to you for, uh, for, for the entire two hours you can't let all the other guests come back another week. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm, I'm coming back to preach. But that's yes. what I was going to tell yes. the audience at home. Um, we're, not, we're not getting rid of Jamal Harrison Bryant quite yet. Thank you. Uh, right near the end of the broadcast, he's going to come back and he's going to preach the word for us. Is that all right with you? Thank you. In the meantime... You for being a blessing Thank you. and talking with can, me. Can I say something before yeah. we go down? Yeah, you let's, can. Go ahead. Let, let, let's use that technology. Yes. Every person who's watching tonight, I want you to send an email to every person in your address book. Text every person you know. I don't care if it's the middle of the night, early in the morning. Let them know a breakthrough is getting ready to happen. Theology is meeting technology on TBN. And let's shut the entire inter internet down through the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Jamal Harrison Bryant, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. He'll be back. But right now, I want you to welcome to the broadcast an amazing psalmist of the Lord who sings better than that. His name 